deep dive on the Duralux 38 from Suntour. First thing you should know is most of these stickers are heat transferred on and they will not come off for the remainder of the fork's life. Every piece of technology has a sticker on this fork, so I hope you like logos. But anyway, let's get into the technical details. It is definitely one of the heaviest 38 millimeter stanchion forks coming in at five pounds, 13 ounces. To find out where all this weight is, you're gonna have to watch the rest of the video. This fork features 24 clicks of low speed rebound, but we really have to get away from counting clicks. We have to look at the range of the rebound and how usable is it and how unusable is it. Now taking a look at the back of the Duralux fork, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on as far as bolt holes and thread holes. And I'm like, what is all this crap? So a deep dive told me basically all these extra bolts down here near the brake caliper mounting points are for ABS. A Bosch ABS system is fully compatible with this fork. Come at near in the future when those are available to buy. Up top on the lower legs, we got some three millimeter bleeder relief valves. These are dual purpose as you can inject oil through there if you want to. The compression adjuster is fairly easy to use. So it's got five clicks of high speed compression, but like I just told you, we have to get away from measuring suspension clicks. We have to look at the usable range and it's a little bit disappointing as you're gonna find out later. The low speed compression, it's got like 15 clicks or something. And same goes for the low speed. The range of it is a little bit disappointing. Now it's quick release only as far as bolting the wheel on. And I tried to put a couple different through axles through this and it's very sun tour proprietary. So I hope you like quick release levers. There is an adjustable collar on the inside of the quick release lever to get the right angle. I personally found it pretty finicky to get correct. The brake cable hose is mounted with this non-threaded clip and you need to be super careful with this clip because I basically got my three millimeter Allen key and tried to pry it off and broke the thing. Let's mount up this Goliath of a fork. Now on the bench, I was not a huge fan of this color. It just kind of feels cheap, but it is a really good match for a flat black bike. The fork features direct mount 200 millimeter rotors so you can just use stubby little bolts and no brake adapters. And nobody should be complaining about this because it's a 38 millimeter stanchion fork. Like I said, if you break that funky brake cable adapter, it's a perfect mount for a zip tie, so that's very good. Now, taking a look at the fork mounted up on the bike, it doesn't feel overly huge. It kind of reminds me of a Fox 38 as far as feel when you're looking down on it. A nice round arch on the fork and not overly big. Every piece of technology on this fork has a sticker and everywhere you look, it's a new sticker or decal featuring a hollow crown. I don't know what's the benefit of this because the CSU, the crown steer unit is one of the heaviest ones I have ever measured. Suntour is known for their affordable suspension and this fork is no exception. It's pretty simple. So let's take it for its first ride. I want you to keep in mind, I traded my Fox suspension for this, so it is a used fork. We got the Sun Tour. We got the rebounds, five clicks from dead slow, 20% tag. And it sounds like no other fork on the market. The rebound range on this fork is extremely slow. So start in the middle and work your way faster on this fork. Oh, it's got some weird noises. So it definitely feels like something's broken and rattling around inside of the fork. And it's pretty progressive and not super plush. If you have a 38 Sun Tour fork and you're watching this, let me know if your fork sounds like this. Now it is a big burly stiff fork and it likes to ride fast and hard, but something does not feel right in this fork. Okay, the fork feels harsh. I'm barely using enough travel. So what we're gonna do is go down in pressure. Okay, almost crashed, but it feels better. 
The fork was essentially unacceptable for me. It was just an absolute wall of resistance. So basically, you can't just say the fork sucks. You have to put some effort in to tuning. So I gotta check inside the fork and see if there's any tokens inside. Do not use a crescent wrench on the top of the top cap to remove the tokens unless you wanna ruin the top cap. At a bare minimum, you need to have an open end 27 millimeter spanner to open up the top cap. Not recommended to use this. You need a shallow depth socket as to not damage the CSU and the top cap. So underneath the top cap, Suntour does something very unique. We have a mechanism with some O-rings and some rubber. And basically just what I suspected, this fork's got three tokens in it and it feels like a wall of resistance. I'm gonna remove two of three tokens and head back out on the trail. Okay, one token. Removing two tokens, see if it fixes it. Feels exactly the same, <laughs> except for more divey in the front. <laughs> it's absolutely shocking that nothing changed from removing two tokens. It feels precisely the same as the first run oh. with three tokens. So I took a look at the compression and I already have it in the wide open setting. So there's something either seriously wrong with this fork or this fork seriously sucks. Now I am a little bit picky, but as you can see, I cannot get through the travel basically the same as the first ride. Now there's some certain forks out there like the RockShox Zeb where you have to run a super fast rebound to make it not feel harsh. This is what I recommend you doing if you have a Sun Tour suspension fork. You're going to take the rebound and you're going to move it to the full fast setting that's full minus. Then you're going to run it on some jump trails and you're going to feel how it feels in the full minus setting. Then you're going to go to the full plus setting which is full slow and you're going to rerun that Three, same section four, of trail five, to feel the difference. Seven. The rebound damping on Sun Tour is very special let's say. And let me tell you speeding the rebound up did not fix the issue. The Duralux has one thing going for itself. It consistently feels like shit, but I don't give up that easy. So I went super deep down the YouTube rabbit hole and did a bunch of studying on this fork in a race environment, AKA on an e-bike, they recommend you injecting two cc's of oil into the lower leg relief valves. So I got the Shimano brake bleed kit off Amazon that costs $19 and it does have the fitting that fits inside the fork and the fitting or the threads inside the lower legs are five by 0.8. That is millimeters and $19 to inject some oil into your fork. Just make sure you thoroughly, thoroughly clean any brake fluid off of this tool before injecting oil into your fork. And have a lot of alcohol on hand because this job is a big mess. Now I watched this YouTube video on Sun Tour Guy and he's like, as long as the oil's synthetic, just put it in the lower legs. So I got some Fox 20 weight oil cause who doesn't want their fork to feel like a Fox. Now it only recommends putting in two cc's of oil but I'm kind of a hack. So I'm gonna put 10 cc's of oil in it cause I'm trying to get more performance out of this fork. Keep in mind, you'll find out later why you should not do this. I make these mistakes in videos so you don't have to. Looking for any point of friction, I basically took the quick release lever here and made it as soft as possible without having any free play in the wheel because that can't bind the fork up if you have it too tight. And if you remember, this quick release lever is a little bit finicky. So with a ghetto lower leg service done, the fork feels exactly the same. That's the one thing it has going for it. It's pretty consistent. Now I'm gonna try the fork at 20% sag and 30% sag. And I recommend you making these tools out of cardboard cause they just really make your life a lot easier. Now I don't recommend you modifying your fork from factory, but you can watch my hack videos and do it if you feel like it at your own risk. What I'm gonna do is remove all the tokens and this piston cup thing from the top cap. Essentially you're gonna need a tiny set of snap ring pliers to pick the snap ring off of it, and then you're gonna end up with just a little rod thing. 
Now the damper in the Duralux is on the affordable side, so running 30% sag, pushing way into the travel sounds like a bad idea because it's not gonna have as much support. So I'm gonna start at 20% sag again. There's three bolts to get the fender on this fork. It's a super unique fender like nothing else on the market. What do you think about it? Let me know your thoughts. So this is all the stuff I removed from the positive chamber and let's take it for a ride. Okay, this is round two. First round, I couldn't get through the travel. <laughs> That's what you wanna feel. All right, so I got through all the travel. So there was definitely an improvement from removing all that stuff from the positive chamber, but it's a little bit too early to be calling if this fork is actually fixed or not. And remember that was a complete botched hackery, not recommended to deviate from factory. Now the performance of the fork was greatly improved from removing all the tokens. And I could recommend you doing this and running a little bit higher air pressure than they recommend. But keep in mind, the fork doesn't feel perfectly good, but I'm confident enough to take it off the test track and hit some more serious trails. Okay, was not super impressed as far as traction goes on this fork, but I have the compression completely closed because I was just pounding blue flow trails. So we gotta go back some compression off and then go run that little steep section again and see if she grips some more traction. Back the low speed off, see if she gets a little more traction. See if the damper is actually working. A little bit better. Now this is gonna be a common theme throughout the video. Full closed compression to full open compression, there's hardly any difference. The fork is just consistently pretty shitty, to be honest. Do not inject 10 cc's of oil into this fork. It is not designed to run on oil bath. It is completely dry inside, and if you do it like I did, it basically pukes outside of the seals and makes a massive mess. Now, the fork is consistently feel like shit no matter what I do to it. But with all that modification to the air spring and hardly any changes, I suspect there's a problem inside of the damper. Once I removed the damper from the fork, there was no apparent air in it, but I had to fully tear it down to see if anything was broken. Because if you remember, I told you this is a used fork. It could have 20,000 race miles on it and never been serviced. Now there is zero instructions on how to take the damper apart or the fork. But remember, it's a Suntour product. It's gotta be pretty simple. So I just took it apart by feel and figured it all out. So this is the compression assembly and it's super simple. There's no shims inside of it. It's essentially like a advanced RockShox Yari damper. There's a couple of oil ports and a compression needle. And I didn't find anything wrong with it. Everything looked good. But I did read a lot of articles and it looks like a lot of people are suffering from air in the dampers on these forks. And that compression needle has no oil seal when it passes through the oil from the outside. So basically, no instructions like I told you. So I put 2.5 weight RockShox oil in the damper and I figure it's Suntour, it shouldn't be too sensitive, right? Now, since we're going full RockShox, I put those foam rings in some RockShox Super Dynamic Maxima Plush Fluid and I'm gonna inject five cc's of oils into the lower legs. I like it with the lower leg bath because it does quiet the fork down quite a bit. It's putting the air piston cup thing back on the top cap, but I'm gonna go for the first ride with no tokens in the fork. So full service damper, five cc's of oil in the lowers and zero tokens. The fork feels about 85% better. Even though there was no visible air inside of the damper, I think servicing your damper oil is some of the best things you can do for your bicycle. This is what a fork is supposed to feel like. It does have some additional traction. And when it came to jumping, the fork was definitely improved through pumping through this little flow zone. So after fully assembling it with the oil bath, it is quieter, but it will puke out of the side and contaminate your brake pads like my fork. 
If you think I'm an idiot, well, let me show you something. This is the lower leg and it was super hard to film it, but basically since they run a dry system in the lower legs, it's just chewing up the bushings and it looked like a bunch of powder inside of the fork. So that's why I keep putting oil in the lower legs because I want the fork to last longer. So after that first ride, I took it out on another ride and basically the fork was too linear. So I'm gonna put two tokens back in this fork because that's usually what I run in a Fox 38. So the entire time I was chasing an air spring problem, it was actually in the damper. Good lesson to learn here. The performance of the Sun Tour after that full service job with two tokens on these chunky tech trails was absolutely phenomenal. It's as good as anything on the market when it comes to the chunk. When we're on pounding blue flow trails, it's not my favorite fork. If you're a value hunter, bargain hunter, you have to click the video on the screen because the Suntour Vora is one of the most impressive shocks that's ever been on my bike at $399.